Alright, hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're playing the Stanley Parable. And oh my god, this looks trippy as hell. Oh, new. Okay. Uh, so, playing a game, inside of a game, inside of a game, inside of a, okay, I'm just gonna click begin. I have seen people play it, and I was like, <laughs> I want to play it too. It is an old game. Kind of old. This is the story of the man Stanley. I'm going to shut up now. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed the buttons of the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor of the desk. Tell me what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it so winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Alright, so, here we are. Why isn't it doing anything? This is where... Alright. My mouse is acting up. Alright, so we step out of our office. All of his code was gone. What could it mean? What Stanley could it mean? To go to the meeting room. Oh, no, no matter how uh, hard I just turned off the counter back on. He couldn't find a trace of his co workers. Who's throwing papers everywhere? Someone dropped their papers, and then there's one over here, and... Oh. Hmm. Okay. I can't open none of these doors. That sucks. Okay, I don't know what that says. I hate Mondays. <laughs> don't we all? Uh. Oh, door's open. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door and left. Uh, I think I will... Eh, I'll go to the left. I don't know if I should follow his order, so... Yet there was not a single person Let's just say. Either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go out to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Targets. Push for funding for R plus D of new coffee machine. Stan 
Standard. Get Chris out of the broom closet. <laughs> what? Hire someone to hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire someone to fire the paper synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? <laughs> Please keep the targets on the topic of. That's an seems to think I have nothing better to do with my time than to sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to do anything. This is why Stanley and I are on such good terms. Marketing Mondays? Oh, okay. Well, let's keep moving, shall we? Let's see here. Uh, solving interpersonal conflict. To do synergize core value. Alright. I think. What can I. Oh, I can go in here. The broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet. Chris isn't here. here. So he turned around and got back on track. No! This is my broom closet now. Mine. There was nothing here. No choice to make. Part just an empty room. Just no it. Fine, I won't stay. Close the room closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No, Stanley walked downstairs to what to whatever is downstairs because he's curious as hell. Wait, what? He was crazy. And then something I swear we just passed this car. Maybe, all of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his We just... Wait, what? Huh. Behind him That's a good... And for that matter, that is good reason. That's good to... Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself. This is all too strange. This can't be One, two, B, four. <laughs> Not three, but B. I'm dreaming! This is all a dream. Okay, we we was just in here. What the hell? His co-workers weren't actually here. He wasn't going to lose his job. What? Okay, these rooms are repeating. Oh my god. To go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still busy. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float about the Oh no. Oh, no, I don't like this. No. Space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he when oh, he was so see. And then perhaps the strangest question of the Lord entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now hearing the voice speaking to her just kind of shocked Stanley. After all, 
Can you hurt? I don't want to keep walking in circles. Magical stars just a moment ago. How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just. No. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he allowed himself to wake up. He felt. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my car. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it has been. My life is more. Stanley oh wait, oh. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? Uh, oh. This is the story of a woman named Marianne. Wasn't this bad? <laughs> this was about Stanley, though. Whoa, what the hell? But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to do a call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This man she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be born. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, <laughs> this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned in red. <laughs> then she turned and ran. <laughs> this game is funny. I, I, uh, I died though. Sad. I I didn't want to die, but I did. What? No. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. <laughs> um. Well, there. I'm stuck. All right, hang on. I'll be back once I get on. Once I gotta begin the game again. Uh, honestly, I was gonna like pause the recording and go and restart the game, <laughs> but then I realized I could just start again. And then boom, they're back. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps, yeah, 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 him. yeah. I might follow his orders this time. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door and two open doors. I, this, I love this game, it's funny. <laughs> But I'll follow him this time. Yet there was not a single person here under. Yeah, yeah, Seeing yeah. A wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Come in. Oh, 
Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, this is nice. Close, close. Executive bathroom. What? I hate to pee. Open. Damn it. Okay. Hello. Can I just go back here? Why is there two phones? Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret in member. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> Even though you just said it. Incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code. By sheer luck, and easy, he stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh. We gotta go in here. I've learned not to press big red buttons, but it doesn't say anything about one with an arrow on it. Huh? Where am I going? Uh, loading, 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 loading. Loading, loading, loading. Oh, I can't see a thing. Okay, that is dark. Okay, I can see a little bit. What? I'm typing. Okay. Okay, so I can't see it, so I don't know what it says. Oh, there. Okay. <laughs> oh, button. This isn't the red button. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he hit the string? I don't know. Ah, it's opened. Nice. That's a camera. Now the monitor jumps. Oh my god. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Wait, Stan is co workers. Can I find me? So I was 247, right? On the screen, and Stan, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Was. Two for seven, right here. Right there, yes. That's me, two for seven. Huh, okay. This 
This mind control for food was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? What well, I feel like this is an actual job with no, the mind control. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? All right. Okay, I can't. I literally cannot see. The heart of the operation controls Mind can with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of oh. his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the control. Mind control idol awaiting all. input. Oh. System power on or Sharpest off sharpest eh. Oh Okay oh, <laughs> Did I Did I Did I do it? Did I complete it? And a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? I don't know, was it? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments oh. away. <laughs> and yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building know? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do. Whatever oh. life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way. Right now, oh. the things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. I'm so happy. Eh. Okay. Well, I guess that's going to be it for this video.